Welcome back to the shop. So in this episode, we're going to check out how we built this thing. We're going to take a look at um, how all the parts and pieces that we talked about in the last episode go together. And a little bit more design stuff here and there. Uh, we might see some of the changes that came about while we built it. And we're going to get it ready for the next episode, which is going to be testing it out. Okay, so our hole saw. We have a few different sizes of hole saws that you can get. Uh, they pretty much run up through sixteenths all the way from uh, nine sixteenths to eh, a little bit higher than two inch, with the exception of inch and fifteen sixteenths. For whatever reason, they never made one of those. So this is an inch and seven sixteenths, and we can see that that will work very well. Um, keeping in mind that hole saws wobble a little when you use them so this should be a best fit here if we'd have gone inch and a half with the wobble of the hole saw when it drills we probably would have ended up with an oversized hole so that's gonna work out nice uh, the next thing we need to do is figure out our proper um, layout position for this center wise and we'll take some measurements and get all that marked up so it's a little hard to see what's going on here but what we did was we held one of these down here where it fits best and then took a metric transfer punch and one that just fits this hole transferred these holes to the back plate here and you can see the four holes that one's not overly visible but it's there and once we had the whole four holes marked we took a straight edge and you know matched the two holes across to find center. So that's where we're going to drill our hole saw hole. And then we'll get one mounted and we'll set the other one on top and repeat the process. Okay, so we got four holes marked out here. You can see we got an X pattern. We laid out our plug here laid it out on the inside so that I know I have the right clearances on the outside. Uh, there is a little cross member that we're going to have to trim on the outside to get everything in but it should work out pretty good. So we measured this with our calipers and it's 1 and 7 8 OD. Got a 1 and 7 8 hole saw here. We're going to send it through. And just like that, a hole is born. So from here, what we can do is deburr all this and get the plug in. So one of the reasons why you end up with so many tools, here's an old 3 8 M12 drill, is you end up putting many different tips on all these tools. So here we put a basically counter countersink on this and we're going to use that to get our just a deburr and uh, here we have our plug inlet I'm going to orient it so that the ground is up when the box is standing on end that way when it's sitting the way it is now the neutral will be up and if something falls in there it'll, it's just a safer practice so here we go, just like that. And now we gotta see what we gotta trim. Yep, we got a little trimming to do on the outside. Let's get that done and we'll be back. Okay, here we go. We got this loosely mounted. Um, everything, it's secured, you know, the way it's gonna be. But we're gonna have to wire this up and we can't get to the screws with it the way it is. So we'll have to unmount it and wire it when we get to that point. Right now what we're doing though is we're just uh, basically roughing everything in, fitting everything into place and getting everything working. So here we can see our fans. We got them mounted. Um, I'm not happy with the fasteners I have for this. I wanted to use nylocks on the inside like we did over here for the, the plug. I just didn't have anything long enough so I'm going to order them in 
and uh, we'll, we'll get that the way we like it. But that's the the uh, the intake fans. We got them right there, and now we have some other plugs that we're going to be mounting here. Are um, the plugs that we're going to plug into are 120 plugs. And we got some switches we're going to put over here. And then on the other side, we have this 250 volt plug. Uh, it's actually what we're going to use for our 12 volt plug. There's a reason behind that. Uh, it'll become all obvious later. Some guys would be like, why would you use that plug for 12 volts? But we there's, there's a method to the madness. So here, this only has two mounting holes. Uh, it's going to be a little tougher to find center, but... The gasket actually has four. So I'm going to mark all four. We got the two that we, we need to use mounted right here. But I'm going to make dots in the other two so we can X that off and find center. This is just our outside gasket. Okay, so you can see kind of around the wires here that we got the cross hatch going. So what we want to do is we want to take our drill and we want to drill the center and we'll drill the side two holes because those are the only two that we're going to use for mounting. Drill that out. So far our M14 conversion on the old Power Plus drill is holding up pretty good. Been using it for stuff like that. So now we take our drill with the hole saw on it. One and three quarter. Drill that. That is close, but not quite there with those those marks. So now we can deburr this with our deburring tool, and uh, we'll be back. Okay, and we're back. We got that mounted. Now here again, um, we can't wire this with it installed like this because we can't access the screws. We're just getting everything mounted up. We're gonna have another outlet here. Um, actually right here and then we'll have a bunch of switches right here to control everything so we're going to do the same thing we did before lay everything out drill our holes get our outlet in then we'll lay out our switches get our switches in and we're back we got both outlets mounted now on the outside so now what's left is some switches and the switches are going to be the switches here that we see. One's going to be the cutout switch for the charger, one's going to be the switch for the inverter, and the other one's going to be the bypass switch for the 120 volt receptacle. The other two switches go on the other side. So like I said I'm using these uh, 19 millimeter three quarter uh, maintaining push buttons uh, screw terminal this measures just at 3 quarter inch so we're going to use an, an 11 16 hole saw just because of the wobble with the hole saw and if it's a little small we'll file it in it's only plastic so we got our holes laid out this is our vertical line here and we got them on one inch centers just about just a little over maybe inch and a sixteenth uh, it is a three quarter switch so that should be pretty good they'll be cozy but it'll be fine so we got them I wanted to make sure I had enough gap between top and bottom there okay so we got our first hole in uh, the switch fits very well I just put it in backwards here so we can see it uh, works out very nicely the problem I had was actually the inch and 11 16 hole saw here was actually too small. But since we're down around that size, I decided to go with just a, a vary bit or a cone bit or step bit or whatever you want to call them. And one trick that I like to use is take a sharpie, take a sharpie and mark 
the last step that you got to come up to. Not that you got to drill, but the last step that you got to come up to. So you drill through to your, your black mark. And that way, you know, you don't over drill. Because sometimes it can be a little hard counting these things out. So I'm going to send the hole saw through and then we'll clean it up with the, uh, with the vary bit. So all we should have to do now is do a little deburring and we should be there. There we go. Just a little tough in that spot because the uh, the drill hits. So now we got three nice snug fitting holes for our push buttons. So let's get them installed. Now these do come with a rubber o-ring and I am going to put that on. Just a little extra seal. Nothing wrong with that. So let's get these in. Okay, so this is one of those instances where you end up with something goofy. I needed a deep socket to clear the switch, and I don't need a super big ratchet, so I have a short handle that works on 3 8 and half. So let's get our switch loosely indexed. And we just want to feel everything come tight, just like that. And this, we should be able to wire up with it in place. And if we want to change that indexing later, we can. Get this one through. And same thing, we just want to feel everything crush as we tighten. And there we go. So we got fans mounted, our inlet plug, our two receptacles, and our control switches. Everything's working well. I think I'm happy with the layout. We can start looking at the other side. So before we get too far, let's take a look at where we got to here. We got our three switches. They seem to work nicely. We have our receptacles. And we have our inlet. And we're back. So, new day. We're going to look at getting this receptacle mounted. So, when you do this stuff, you want to just take your, take a caliper or something like that and measure it. Now, this measures uh, just about 1 and 3 eighths. It's a little bigger than 1 and 3 eighths. This is plastic, so we'll be able to ream it if it is a little... Yeah, we just clean it up a little bit if we want. So this is going to be our 12 volt receptacle. We got a loose mark here on where center of this area is, close enough for what we're doing. We're going to get a hole saw through this and uh, get that mounted there. So a good trick when using hole saws is you can take the hole saw off the arbor and use your pilot bit to start the hole. A lot of times, sometimes when you um, break through with the pilot bit, the hole saw wants to grab right away and snap everything. So just take the, the hole saw off the arbor and start your hole. So there we go. We got our pilot hole. Now I'm going to put the, the hole saw on the other side so I don't uh, make a mess in here. And here we go.
So I don't know if you can see that, but we're starting to poke through here. If you're ever drilling with a hole saw and something that you don't want to really come in fast and furious with, it's always good to look for that little witness mark and then you know to not uh, go so crazy. See, we just real gently drill through there. And then we got our uh, we got our hole. So we got our hole reamed out, and I'll just put this in backwards so you can see. That's going to work out just nicely. Nice snug fit. And we have two options here. We could mount here, or we could mount here. I think I'm going to use the oval slots, put nuts on the inside, and run this. Uh, you could do whatever you want with your own, um, but this actually has more contact surface area which is the only reason why I'm going for that. So let me get some holes laid out here, drill some holes, and we'll be back. Okay, so we got two additional holes laid out here. Let me get our drill in here. Get two holes. So we got our holes. Now we get some fasteners. Now I am going all stainless on this just because this is going to get used outside and I don't want to have everything get all rusty on me. So let me get some fasteners and we'll be back. So here we go. We got it all mounted up. Now we're not killing these fasteners or anything like that. They are stainless so we don't want them to go up on us. But also, uh, this whole thing is, uh, we're going to have to take it apart again anyway. So, just to get everything wired up, we're just getting everything mounted first. Okay, so, here we got our receiver mounted. Uh, that'll be for our remote control. Uh, I The mounting screws that were on it were actually uh, too small, so I ended up just going with uh, double-sided tape on it. It'll, it'll work out. Um... We got our USB receptacle mounted. I decided to put a regular 12 volt outlet in it. We got that mounted. Got our switch for the USB. There'll be another switch here for the 12 volt. Here's our main 12 volt outlet and its switch. And we got the fans mounted over in this side. So the next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna start to lay out the batteries in here and figure out how we're going to mount everything. I think what I'm going to do is run a piece of angle, a very short angle around with a piece of uh, thinner uh, stick foam across here just so that the battery's casement doesn't wear on the angle. So I think that's what I'm going to do. Uh, I'll get that material together and uh, we'll be back. We're also going to look at how we're going to mount the inverter uh, the control relays and a bunch of other stuff in here as well. So, Okay, so we're screwing around here with a little bit with, with things, and we're countersinking our holes to mount stuff onto our uh, battery brace. And one of the things that came up is, with this hole being so close to the edge, can't quite get the drill straight to countersink that. So a good trick is if you buy countersinks that have this uh, quarter-inch hex, uh, set up on them, you can put them on extensions 
And then once it's on an extension, you can run it right next to everything there. No problems whatsoever. So it's just a nice little trick. And if you're going to buy something, maybe consider stuff like that. If the product has that, because that'll give you a little bit more versatility in what you're doing. Perfect. Okay, so I thought I'd share a little fun fact here. If you have one of these uh, Milwaukee Dremel-esque tools, that the Dremel attachments work on it. So you can thread on, like I have a 90 degree head here. You can put the collet adapter and everything right on it and use that tool just like you would normally with your Dremel on the uh, Milwaukee cordless tool. So just a fun little thing there I thought I'd share. Uh, we're going to fire this up and cut these bolt heads off that are just a little bit long on the fans. So let's get that going. <laughs> And there you go. Works like a charm. So just a nice little uh, thing that I don't know if many guys know that or not, but you can use. That applies for like the flex shaft and all those fun attachments. They all thread on to the Milwaukee uh, die grinder here. or That's more of the rotating, what do they call it, rotary tool. And it's all the same thread here, this this thread on the tool matches the Dremel thread. So kind of nice. You can throw on your, your Dremel attachments and uh, have a cordless Milwaukee tool on M12 batteries. Okay, so what we're gonna do here is we have a product that uh, has adhesive on one side and this nice rubber on the other. And I think I'm gonna use that here on the inside of our battery retainer just to not have the aluminum against the battery casement and also just to give the battery some stiction you know so it's it doesn't slide around it is going to be largely clamped in place but didn't want to have it too too loosey goosey so all that being said i have a mark here um, i found this stuff stretches a little bit there we go why don't i get out of frame and I have I found it stretches a little bit. So I have a mark just over center, and you can use a regular scissors to cut it. Okay, so we got our cut. And now it's as simple as pulling off the the back. And here we have our piece. So now all we gotta do is line up one corner. Get the other corner aligned and then lay it flat down across and if you have to stretch it a little you can but really I find if you just oversize it a slight amount it's actually good so there we go and now our bracket is nice and rubber lined all right so what we we're getting along here on our project uh, one of the things we did was we popped the top out of this, and the reason for that was I have two remotes that I want to hang these here. I have two remotes that I want to hang inside the cover. So I was looking at the cover and it looked like it came out, and sure enough it did. So there's little snaps that come out and these uh, these plugs. So we'll move over to the cover and take a look at that. So when you look at the cover, you see there's these little uh, notches here, and they actually line up with little tabs on the inside. There you can see them, little tabs there. And that's 
what holds the outsides of that uh, lid insert on and then these little plugs here go into these holes so all I did was I uh, picked the spot where there was nothing behind and I drilled two holes and put some eye bolts bent eye bolts in so let me uh, get this sort of back together here and we'll take a look at it. So having those there allows me to hook these remotes onto those. And they can hang there just like that. So sometimes when you're assembling stuff, you want to just make a mess. And what I mean by that is not everything has to be perfect. You can see these wires, they're not all fit in perfect. They're just loosely run. Uh, there's a bunch more down here. Everything's just kind of in place. And you want to make sure that everything's going to work. So what we've done is we've loosely wired everything. We have our 12 volt uh, high current side right here. And we can kind of move camera around a little bit. This is mainly our 12 volt distribution stuff here. All the fuses. Here's our inverter. You can see our charger here. Here's our main contactor for the inverter, our two secondary relays for the other uh, bits. Here's our um, receiver for the, the remote relay function that we got. And uh, you know this stuff here, here's our USB charge, our regular 12 volt charge. Over here you can't quite see, uh, this is our 12 volt outlet. And over here on the side we have our 120 outlets and our, our switches. So we've got everything loosely wired, fans, cooling fans, uh, everything's ready to go here. Let's see if it works. So right off the bat, we're gonna turn on, this is our USB, and to go with that, we have our uh, 12 volt um, receiver here, for the re for, and we should get relays to operate. You can see them operate there. We hit on and off. So we're getting that to work. So that's a good sign. Um, we should have a, a remote uh, bypass. Right there it is. That's a bypass for our uh, uh, 120 volts. So we don't have to, if we had the inverter running and we didn't want to use the, the remote, we wouldn't have to. Uh, we have our receptacle. You can hear the relay clicking, and our other receptacle, hear that relay clicking. Now the inverter, see that power up, and we can hear all the fans running, and that's how we get our 120 volt to the receptacles. You can see the uh, relays moving here. So we have basically everything working the way it should. Now that we know our idea works, I did meter our outlets, they're 120 volt. Since we know everything should work, now what we can do is we'll go back through and clean everything up. So that'll take a little bit of time. Maybe I'll take some photos in the prog process of that, but uh, exciting news that everything's working the way it should. This mount has gotten nice and solid, and we have um, a good ground on everything. We actually have a, a ground wire here going right to the ground block, and uh, everything's worked out reasonably well. I mean, this is a lot of stuff crammed in this uh, packout box, so... Let's get some labels on these wires and we'll try and clean everything up. And from there, start testing this thing out. We'll be back. So I realize we uh, just kind of glossed right over a bunch of things here. Uh, we have all this stuff mounted on the inside of this uh, cabinet now. And I didn't really go over how we did all of it. So I thought I'd touch on a little bit. Um, I realized that the video was starting to get a little drawn out with me mounting everything and doing everything so I thought I'd get a little bit more of the work done so 
here we are now with everything pretty much complete and you can see what we did here we took angle that rubberized angle that we put the rubber on and we put it on either side of the batteries there's an e uh, another one of these pieces of angle on the other side and we can take a look at that then um, that creates a cradle for the batteries and then we have a longer one along the front here down low now this is a piece of bent angle we had around the shop this is 10 gauge it's bolted through the pack out just like this those are countersunk um, quarter 20s that are flush with the bottom of the pack out so that you can still pack uh, pack stack this um, and that'll you know that lets us use this as a pack out still and uh, have all this stuff mounted inside and um, I'll, I can flip it over then and we'll, we'll see what the underside looks like so here we can see um, we got our countersunk bolts here um, these are in, in the face where you know another pack out would slide right here and these here we, we put specifically inside these ribs so they would be out of the way of any other pack outs going together so everything works nicely as a pack out should no problems with hanging up or anything like that so that part of it had worked out very well the quarter inch fasteners have a nice amount of meat to them on the flathead so that that's plenty strong for what we're doing with them this is just another piece of uh, 10 gauge angle that that I bent it bolts through here um, this is flush mounted screws that stick out this way so the screws can't go into the batteries and then this runs across the top and back down the other side it's symmetrical that's what keeps the batteries from from going this way upwards and then we mounted our uh, blocks for terminations on that so I'll, I'll move the camera and we'll take a look at a little bit more of that so here we go we can see a little bit more um, here's the the negative splice block and really all I did was these are just junction basically they're meant for car audio equipment uh, they're just blocks here uh, we crimped furls on everything so that it, it had a nice um, I don't like set screws on stranded wire you tend to uh, tear everything off so uh, we crimp furls on everything this is um, number eight wire it was well within the current range of what we were using this for um, so this is our negative here's our positive and then we have our fuse block here um, that will break out the uh, the higher current so we have a main um, 75 amp fuse here off the batteries and that goes directly to the relay here um, this one I know it's not in frame of for the uh, the inverter now we also have a, f a fuse 2 uh, this is 50 amp and that feeds this fuse panel now this fuse block is for all the auxiliary stuff you can see we have all this stuff in here and all this stuff is mounted to this piece of um, aluminum that runs across the top as our battery cradle and everything that touches the batteries has rubber on it so this was a piece that you saw us countersinking we countersunk that and that has everything there's no all these screws are flush on the underside and rubbers over top of them um, the last thing here is the AC relays and they're just mounted on a piece of aluminum angle that got them up and everything is flush with the uh, the cover here for the pack out so that the cover can close and everything's still inside so that gets us across to here and we'll move the camera over here so now you can see here's here's our relays you can see they're bolted through into this piece of aluminum angle and then here's the other side you can see this piece of flat stock bolts down into a piece of angle just like that and here we can see a little bit better what we have for um, this piece of 10 gauge it's just a bent angle and then a piece of aluminum angle here it's not the thickest but it didn't have to be 
um, that has rubber coating on it to protect the batteries. And then our inverter, we're, we're going to move next to see that. Our inverter is mounted to this nice big piece of aluminum, which, which helps it as a heat sink. And this is our contactor for the inverter. Um, and we also added a fuse here onto it for the fans. So when the inverter is turned on, the other fans also turn on at the same time. And that just helps keep everything cool. We know we need the fans whenever the inverter is running. If um, we're just using this as a, as a battery um, to, to use the 12 volt receptacles or even the USB charge, we really don't need the fans to run in here. So we designed it so that whenever the inverter is turned on, the other fans in the box casement run. So I don't know if we'll see this or not, but if you watch the fan blade right here, when I hit the button and turn on the inverter, we should see the little light come on. There, the inverter's on, and the fans are running at the same time. So there we go. That works the way we want. <clears throat> we can have the fans run, moving air through here, and cooling the inverter. Okay, so something basic and simple here is just the battery charger. We have the power coming in for it, right into the end. And we have the power coming out of it right here, and that goes back to a fuse in this fuse block. And that back feeds through to the, uh, to the battery itself to charge it. Um, battery chargers are pretty simple. You plug them in, they work. Um, it just needed to be in here, and we have that bolted with bolts through the pack out to the outside, and they too are countersunk so that they're nice and flush. Shouldn't have any issues with that whatsoever. So moving down through here, um, so the last area that we'll take a look at, we went over our inverter and our regular 12-volt um, outlet. Um, they're nice features to have on here. And we also have the relays here that um, turn the heavier duty 12 volt outlet and our smaller 12 volt outlet on. That's what these two are. Now we also have some diodes that we figured out sizing for. Basically I doubled the, the expected current just about on these diodes and we've mounted them to this piece of aluminum, uh, this 10 gauge aluminum. It works really well as a heat sink for the, uh, the diodes and really all we're doing here with these diodes is um, creating a path that um, when the current is turned off to a device, say this contactor opens under load and turns off the, uh, the inverter, instead of an arc messing up the, uh, the contact tips on this uh, relay, the diode will send the current, reverse current, back through to ground. And that way we, we don't arc the tips up on our relays. Now that's really beneficial with these little 5 amp switches that we installed here. You really don't want to burn up your switches because um, that, that really kind of, you got to change parts and deal with all that nonsense. So it just kind of, it was a fun thing to learn about and my rule of thumb basically on it was I, I just went overboard on the, um, the available current that these things could work with if I expected a... Uh, like this one, I expected a 20 amp draw, so this is a 50 amp rated diode. And again, everything's heat sunk. They're not gonna really get hot because they don't see constant current. It's only, you know, briefly. But it's kind of neat to put that in there. Um, it was fun to play around with, neat thing to learn about. So I took the fuse cover off here, and I think the last thing that I like to talk about is the fuses and how we got to the sizes for the fuses. Um, I, I tried pretty hard to not um, oversize, well, there's a Goldilocks zone with fuses. Um, our, our, I pretty much tried to keep all the loading of the fuses at or below 80%. I tried to be mostly in the 80% range with all of it, just because that is kind of a an area where the fuse doesn't... Um, they can trip, you know, say it's a 10 amp fuse, if you drew 10 amps continuously through it or 9.5, you, 
you might have a nuisance trip on the fuse. You should probably go a little bit higher. So all of our fuses are all sized um, for the loads. So like the, um, the battery charger, um, that's 80% over. Um, pretty much all the stuff in here is. The, in the inverter itself, um, that is fused here at 75 amps. And that's, I think we were, um, it should have been like 65 possibly, because I think the, the draw for it was, I don't know, 45 or 50 amps or something like that. So we're a little higher on that, but it's it'll be okay. Now our switches are rated for 5 amps, and our USB outlet also draws 5 amps. So that's something that um, we, we kind of just wanted to, you know, go with that. Chances are we're not going to have a full 5 amp load on the... the, the um, USB charger, so it, it should be good, but you can kind of see a trend here where we're just trying to size everything accordingly. Now that I didn't go 80% because we're trying to protect, I didn't want to go higher than 5 amps on any of the switches that are here, um, you know, our little 5 amp switches, the, the push button jobs, because they are 5 amp rated, so if we went higher than that, we would run the risk of burning up our switch. So that's why all of these smaller fuses are pretty much all within the five amp range. There is 120 here, and that is feeding the relay over here for the 20 amp outlet. And then there's also a 10, because that is what the other 12 volt outlet is rated for. It's rated for 10 amps. So I didn't want to exceed the 10 amps uh, again, and I don't think we'll have an issue with nuisance tripping there. So it's a little bit of insight into how we sized some of this stuff. It's not, there's a process to it and, you know, people could argue one way or the other of how that's done, but this is where we're starting with it and we'll see how it works for us. So other than that, I'd say everything's pretty much um, our relay contacts here had to be rated for the output of the inverter. So we needed to make sure that was all, you know, wet within specification there, uh, which really the output of this inverter isn't very high. It's like five amps. So these are, I think these are 10, 15 amp rated, uh, relay contacts. So we're well above what the inverter can even put out and the inverter itself has its own protections in it so we didn't really need to go to circuit breaker in the AC side of things so most of our current protection is all on DC side um, there are some battery terminals out here uh, like here's battery positive you know it, it most everything's protected in here but there are some energized components you know exposed shall we say but they're really not once we put our covers on you know, you have to really be kind of determined to try and and get something in, into where it shouldn't be in this thing. I'm pretty happy with how all this turned out. We have a decent separation of DC and AC. We have a pretty good line here where from here over is AC and pretty much from here over to the end is all of our DC equipment. So that turned out pretty nice. Uh, it's just a nice thing to try and divide your stuff up so that you're not cross-pollinating all kinds of things. So um, here's a little look. Hopefully this isn't too uh, drawn out and long-winded, but I do realize that we just kind of poof, this whole thing was built. So I wanted to go into some explanation of what went into it, and hopefully it answers some questions for people. So this was a super fun project to do. I enjoyed... Uh, every part of it, a little bit of research on things, amp hour calculations, you know, uh, wattage calculations for the inverter, chargers, you know, all that fun stuff was in there. Did the fusing, diodes, you had a bunch of things going on here. So it was a fun little project. Uh, I really enjoyed it. Uh, stick with us in the next episode. We are going to check out testing this thing and how well it works.
See you next time. Thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.